Oh yeah, now that's some proper clickbait. So recently I was scrolling through Twitter when I came across this weird character from a manga that I could swear looked like Yu-Gi-Oh. I took a closer look and looked through the comments and found out that he actually was from a Yu-Gi-Oh manga. More specifically from the manga, Yu-Gi-Oh OCG Structures. So I thought to myself, Yu-Gi-Oh OCG Structures? That is a horrible name for a manga. Of course, I've never seen it before, so let me go ahead and give it an actually perfectly legal opportunity to look at it. At this point, I've kind of moved past the manga and anime Yu-Gi-Oh series like a long time ago. I just got tired of the same bland repetitive stories. It's, it's like literally almost always the same thing. The main character is just a random guy who just happens to have a weird haircut and is unbelievably strong at dual monsters. The main character pulls a weird, unexpected, barely legal move in his first real situation that gets people wondering like how he pulled it off right when he's about to lose, and then begins this weird story of just finding out how card games relate to gods, or like godly tyrants, or godly dragons, or godly ghosts, or godly tyrants again, and the main character starting a duel with a strong turn 1, having his board broken turn 2, barely holding on for turn 3, pushed back to the ropes in turn 4, and somehow top decking a banned card to win the game in turn 5 with under 500 life points for a perfect game. Anyway, enough talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. The Yu-Gi-Oh card game is probably like one of my favorite games of all time. I've been playing this game since I was what, like 5 years old? And right now I am turning 23 later this week. So, you know, I hate myself already. Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG Structures, though, is a manga series that was created and centered around Yusa Shoma, a kid who really likes the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game. I'm gonna be calling him Yusa because he's the main character, but he has a sister whose name is technically also Yusa, but I'm gonna refer to her by her first name since Shoma is the main character, or Yusa is the main character. The manga starts with Yusa's sister looking for him and realizing that he left because the newest Yu-Gi-Oh set at the time, Rising Rampage, came out that same day. In case it's not obvious, Yu-Gi-Oh OCG structures actually takes place in what's essentially real life Japan, except they have solid vision systems and they have actual holograms because of it, which is really cool and I wish Yu-Gi-Oh would have that someday, maybe in like 50 years. Anyway, so Yusa heads to his local card shop to duel for a little bit. But he ends up stopping because he's actually just too uncomfortable and socially anxious to talk to people that he doesn't know. Then we're introduced to two main characters. Tour guide from the underworld, her real name is Desu, which is a pun on death because she looks exactly like tour guide and makes underworld puns constantly. And Goriki Juku, who comes up to him, but his name that everybody just calls him is Strong Juku, so I'm gonna call him Strong. Anyway, before he even starts his first duel, Yusa actually has to step aside and make a Konami Kasi ID, which is just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Just the, the amount of real world depth that this is hitting. You even see him fanboying after getting the card, because living in the country with his sister, he never really had anybody else to play with except her. Then we get a little bit more backstory. He only played with his sister Ageha, Ageha? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this, I don't want to say Ahegao, whatever. And he had no other friends. She moved to Tokyo and he hadn't seen her in multiple years, so that time, instead of just taking a break, he kept playing but by himself and just made a bunch of different decks. Then he developed a very, very interesting skill, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Then Miss Tour Guide announces the format for the tournament that day. In a real world partial draft, everyone gets a single box of Rising Rampage and has to build a deck using at least 20 cards from that box. This is an insane premise because this is really not that far removed from the real world. We can actually see real tournaments being held this way, and certain freaks on the internet play sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh! At this point, the main character's skill is revealed, being able to memorize cards and effects relatively easily and piece together what works well. He proceeds to choose his deck for the format and we're given a peek into Yusa's head, which is an actual fictional world full of doors with card backs on them, and each one is a different archetype. Then he, I kid you not, floats down to a door, opens it, to decide on the deck that he's playing, which ends up being Tenyi's. He talks to Monk of the Tenyi, Berserker of the Tenyi, and Shaman of the Tenyi, who each individually give him advice on deck ratios, like playing three copies of Adhara, and throwing in staples like Link Karibo and Needle Fiber. After a bit of struggling, Yusa realizes that he actually doesn't have the right ratios to balance his deck properly, so he gets an idea. But that idea is a mystery for now. 
He makes sure to sleeve up his cards because Yusa is not a degenerate and battles against strong Juku in his first game. And instead of giving us the fluff of competitive play, we cut straight to Strong's end board on the first turn. We see that he chose some Morgue as his deck and ended on Apex Avion and Dark Morgue. Just an example of more staples being used the right way. I assume that at this point you've gotten the picture. Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG Structures is just the entire card game. It's just a card game. There's nothing else. They're just kids playing cards in a local card shop. They happen to have holograms, you know, but it's still just a card game. They're playing competitively, but they want to have fun. They're not really getting anything out of it besides maybe packs. The main character makes moves multiple times throughout the series that he just chooses because he wants to bring out monsters he thinks are cool. Anyway, back to the story. You probably want to know how that duel against Strong went, right? Well, let's skip past the back and forth moves because of course it's always like that. But interestingly, Yusa actually never goes too far into the losing territory. He's almost always got the edge. Even when Strong completely rebuilds his board with the same monsters, he's still able to get rid of all of them really easily. So even though Yusa has both Monk and Berserker of the Tenyi on board and a clear path to victory, he goes ahead and styles on Strong by suddenly normal summoning Chi Wen, Light of the Yang Zing. We never see this happening in Yu-Gi-Oh! manga and anime, like splashing different archetypes together, because for some reason, the only characters that actually get multiple archetypes in one deck are just the main character, who gets one card that is perfect for the situation immediately after they get that card. Anyway, by concluding his main phase with a board of Berserker, Needle Fiber, and Suwani, Yusa now has game on board and attacks for it. What happens now? Nothing insane, absolutely not. Yusa makes friends with Strong, and after the tournament that Yusa wins because it just so happened to be pretty casual, Yusa and Strong end up just playing a few games off to the side, not even with the hologram system, they're just, they're just playing Yu-Gi-Oh, they're just having fun like kids do. So I just explained the synopsis of the first two chapters for you, and I hope that you enjoyed it, but let me just keep going with a few more interesting points of this manga. First of all, to keep it entertaining, all of the pointlessly long combos are set aside to the editor's notes at the end of every chapter, so you don't spend an eternity reading the most boring garbage in the world, but at the same time, if you really want to know in depth and just improve with your knowledge of the game, you can actually go to the end of every chapter and figure out how each character just got into the situation they got into. Combined with that, at the end of some chapters, you actually get the deck list that the character is using in the manga. And it's always something that can actually be relatively viable in a casual match. There's way more to it, of course. The main character doesn't win every game. And actually, he loses in one of his first few important duels against someone that's essentially a mini-boss. These characters also never really have bad blood against each other, because at the end of the day, they're just kids going to test their decks at a local card shop. There are arcs where Yusa plays against players that are clearly better than him. There's an arc where the main character has to overcome his mindset of constantly going easy when he actually is trying to win a duel. There's a chapter of Yusa just learning the new master rule at the time. And even an arc where the main character develops PTSD because of Max C. There's also a lot of points where Yusa just switches decks, because playing the same deck over and over again gets boring. Though, of course, there's no such thing as a perfect piece of media. The main character is still stupidly overpowered in this game, even if it does show him losing from time to time. And a couple of the main characters, specifically Dark Kuroda, is just straight up insufferable. You know that guy at your locals that draws by extending his arm fully outward and has his life point counter on max volume? Yeah, that's Kuroda. Well, I mean, this is all that I could really say about this manga. It's very, very short right now. It's ongoing. It just started, I believe, last year or two years ago. And I'm just hoping that it honestly draws on for a while. This is something that could just go on forever. There's no real reason to ever end it. You could just see the main character going into more and more different situations. But whatever. Just go read the manga. That's the point of the video. Or don't. I'm not your mom. Have a great day and or night. Like, subscribe, whatever. Bye!